Okay, so today we are going to finish up section four. We are going to actually combine all of our factoring techniques together. And the name of this lesson or part of this is called factor completely or factoring completely. So we're gonna be combining all types of factoring. Um, you may need to factor more than once. Always, always, you should check for a GCF first. Um, and then if there's only two terms in your problem, it could either be the difference of two perfect squares, it could be the sum or difference of two perfect cubes. If you have four terms in your polynomial, then potentially you could factor by grouping. Or if there's three terms, it could either be a perfect square trinomial or the traditional factoring. Now, if you're not good at recognizing perfect squares and it's a three term polynomial and you wanna resort to the traditional factoring, you can do that even on the perfect square trinomials. However, if you're good at recognizing the perfect squares, it definitely will make things a lot easier. But always, 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 Look for a greatest common factor before you begin your factoring process. So let's go ahead and practice combining all of our techniques. So the first one says to fact, and actually the instructions are gonna be the same for all, factor completely. So first thing I should always, always do is look for a greatest common factor. So my greatest common factor between 12 and 48 is going to be 12. I can divide both of my numbers by 12. So if I divide this one by 12 and this one, I always like to show the GCF, you don't have to. And then now what I'm gonna do is, in the parentheses, write what I get after I divide. So I'm left with an x squared minus four. Now we've already done this. When we covered the difference of two squares in the notes, we actually covered this, we have to keep going because what we got now in the parentheses is the difference of two squares and this can be factored further and this will go into x plus two and x minus two. So this is where it pays off recognizing that x squared and four are both perfect squares and just square root them. Pretty good on that. Don't forget to write your GCF here in front of what you factored again. So just remember, keep bringing that GCF down and then anything else that you factor all along. Number two, again, look for a greatest common factor first. Notice on the first problem, there were no variables in common but that happens to be my GCF on number two. The only thing they have in common is the variable X. So I'm gonna divide. What remains after I divide is X squared minus 16. Again, the difference of two squares. So this I have to keep going. This will factor into X plus four, X minus four. The order that you write those doesn't matter. But again, don't forget about that GCF. It needs to keep coming down in front of your final answer. Because remember, if you were to multiply all of these back together, it'll go back to your original. All right, for the next one, now, I saw some of this on the test, even when that first term wasn't negative. What you're gonna find later on in the course is we always want to make our x squared term positive. So in order to do this, I am going to factor out a negative one GCF. So I'm gonna divide everything by negative one to make that x squared term positive. This is going to help us when we're looking to find the zeros or the roots. So once I factor out a GCF, what remains is all the signs flip to opposite. Now I'm going to factor that perfect square trinomial. 
If you didn't realize that this is a perfect square trinomial, you can do the traditional factoring by either guessing and testing or multiplying the beginning and the end and do the grouping. But I realize that this is a perfect square, so I can square root this one and this one. I'm gonna write the GCF on the outside, but then this will factor into 3x plus one, I mean, sorry, minus one, and 3x minus one. So it's a binomial squared. You can also rewrite it as 3x minus one to the second power. So whenever you are factoring a perfect square trinomial, the answer is always gonna turn into a binomial squared. Good? Yes. Yes. All right, next one. We can either choose to rearrange this one first and put it into standard form, um, or we can factor it the way it is. I'm actually gonna rearrange it and put it in standard form. Standard form is from the largest exponent down to the smallest with the constant being last. So I'm gonna rewrite this and I'm gonna make it as negative three x cubed plus nine x squared plus 12x, and now I'm gonna look for my GCF. My GCF is going to be negative 3x. The reason why I'm choosing negative 3x, because again, I want that leading coefficient, that first term, to be positive. So after I divide all three terms by a negative 3x, what remains is x squared minus 3x minus 4. So now I can factor the trinomial. That is a factorable trinomial. I can find factors of negative 4 that will add to give me or combine to give me a negative 3. Those factors of negative 4 are going to be negative four and positive one. So I'm gonna rewrite the GCF. This trinomial now factors into x minus four and x plus one. Again, you can always go back and multiply your final answer and it should go back to the beginning. The next one is the difference of two perfect squares. You may not recognize it, but they are two perfect squares. So what I can do here is square root this one, do it in yellow, this one, and then this one. So the square root of the first one gives me x squared plus eight. And I'm gonna just set up my binomials x squared plus eight, because what's happening is it's just coming out of the square. And then 36 x squared, when I factor that, that becomes plus and minus six x. Now what I need to do is put both of these trinomials in standard form and keep factoring x squared plus 6x plus 8, x squared, all I'm doing is rearranging right now, getting it into standard form. The first one, factors of 8 that when I combine them give me positive 6, and that's going to be 2 times 4 because 2 plus 4 gives me 6. So x plus 2, x plus 4. The second trinomial, same thing, but the signs are both negative. And again, this will foil to give me this. This will foil to give me that. And again, you can also multiply it and distribute it, and it will go back to the original. So this started out as the difference of two squares. Yes? So why is it two trinomials though? 
to begin with? Because you're factoring it. And whenever you factor two perfect squares, you're just square rooting it. And when I square rooted at the beginning, square rooting a square just makes that square disappear and then this just comes out. So the factors of x squared plus eight, x squared plus eight, so when it was, when it was originally x squared plus eight squared, to split that, I could rewrite it like this. And then I took each one individually and put it here. And then the square root of this is what went here. And that's why it turned into a trinomial. That could be factored even further. So final answer is down here. All four of these binomials are the final answer. We have two more examples, and then we'll start doing some of the problems from the homework. All right, so for number six, as soon as I see four terms, I'm thinking I need to try to factor by grouping. Now, it doesn't necessarily always work. Sometimes you'll have four terms, and maybe it won't be able to be factored. But in this case, it can be. Also, always remember that you need to look for a greatest common factor first. This one doesn't have one. There's nothing in common. So I'm just going to go ahead and make my groups. So I'm going to go ahead and, so it shows up better, I'll make a yellow group, and then I'm going to make a green group. So I'm looking for the GCF of my yellow group, and that's going to be x squared. So I write the GCF. In the parentheses, you're writing what you get after you divide. So I end up with 3x plus 1. My greatest common factor from the green group, again, remember, what ends up in black needs to be the same. So instead of pulling out a positive 9 here, my GCF is actually negative 9. And then I'm going to put what remains. And now I'm going to go ahead and group. So notice these are both the same here. So I write it once. So 3x plus 1. And then now I take the two GCFs and put them together. Now, you had something similar to this on your test. If it, because we did not cover factor completely, if all you did was group and pull it out like this, but did not keep going, then I'm gonna give you full credit. However, some of you realize that this one is still can be factored. It's the difference of two squares. And some of you kept going, which was excellent. However, if you stopped here on the test yesterday, you still get full credit. So let me go ahead and keep going because now we know how to factor completely. This one stays the same, but the x squared plus nine or minus nine becomes x plus three and x minus three. And now that is fully factored. The next one, notice it looks like sort of like grouping almost. So we're going to look for a GCF. So notice what they both have in common is the 2x minus 1. So that's going to be my GCF here. I'm going to divide both of these by 2x minus 1. So that GCF goes on the outside. Maybe I'll write it in green so it shows up a little bit better. So my GCF is 2x minus 1. And now in the parentheses is what I'm going to get when I divide. So for the first one, the 2x minus 1 is canceled. So I'm just left with 4x. Over here in this one, I'm taking away one of the exponents, so I'm still left with 2x plus 1. One of them is still left. 
Now in the parentheses, in that second one, the black one, I have like terms here that I can combine. So this will combine to 6x minus 1, and then the green one stays. So this one was just factoring out a GCF. Nothing else is left to be factored there. All right, so let's do some of the homework here. Now, this is actually the difference of two cubes. So right here, this term is a perfect cube, and so is this one. Remember when we have perfect cubes, we're thinking soap. So remember, we need to cube root this one and cube root this one. And then we're gonna put it into the pattern. So the cube root here is just gonna be b plus three, and then same sign, and then the cube root of 27 is three. Notice when I combine my like terms, all I'm left from here is b. Now, for the pattern for the next part though, Remember, it was this, it's going to be b squared. So we, what we need to do here is we're taking b plus 3, square it, and then the middle term is going to be opposite sign, b plus 3 times 3, and then the last term is going to be that 3, always positive, that 3 squared. So we can FOIL this. So this one becomes b squared plus 6b plus 9. The black becomes 3b plus 9. And then the last becomes plus 9. Now. I got to combine a bunch of like terms here. So let me move this B down. All right, so this, out of this came a B. Out of this parenthesis now, I don't have anything to combine with the B squared. I've got a 6B plus a 3B, which gives me 9B. And then I can add 9 plus 9 plus 9, and that gives me 27. So that was a bit more challenging perfect cube that you had to factor. Let's try the next one. It's just a trinomial. However, the trinomial here has two different variables in it, but we're still doing the same process. Now, you can either choose to guess and test or you can factor by grouping, either way. So let's go ahead and we could do the factor by grouping. So if I do factor by grouping, I'm going to multiply and I get 18 times 5 is 90. Actually, negative 90. Negative 90 x squared y squared. Now, notice my middle here. This middle term, whenever this is a 1, or a negative one, this is gonna give me a clue that my two factors of this are gonna be side by side. So here, to get a negative 90, instead of going through the whole list, one times 90, two times 45, if I know my factors need to be side by side, I'm gonna be using a 9x and a 10y. And again, my signs need to be opposite to get a negative, and the sign on the bigger is the sign of the middle. Now, you can also guess and test here. You could have done the factors of 5, factors of 18, and keep doing FOIL problems until you find the one that works. But again, let me just go ahead, rewrite the 5x squared, rewrite the 18y squared, and now I'm going to replace this middle, this, with these two. It doesn't matter 
the order, and actually this is an XY, sorry, XY here. It doesn't matter the order I put them in here. If you would have preferred to put the 10 first, you can do that. Either way. So now I'm gonna group. I'll make a blue group. And let's do a purple group. All right, so the GCF of my blue group is just gonna be X. So I could divide, oh, I want blue. So GCF of blue is just X. So when I divide, I'm left with 5X plus 9Y. My GCF of the purple group Remember, I want it to look the same as the blue. So when I divide here, I'm gonna be dividing by a negative 2y. And then what remains is the correct thing, the 5x plus 9y. And then now I take these two that were outside, they get grouped together, and then this that was the same, I just write it once. And I just factored that trinomial by grouping. Number three, you're gonna do the same way. You can multiply it um, and get negative uh, 140, and then look for those factors that give you 31. Again, you or you could do the guess and test. Factors of seven, factors of 20, until you find the one that works. Either way on that. Let's try to find a different one, different type of problem. Now notice here, number four, notice we have four terms. So this should be a clue that we're gonna factor by grouping. Um, we can try that and see what we get here. Um, so let's go ahead and try to make some groups. We actually need to, let's see here. This one's a little different as well. Actually, for this one, it's gonna be the difference of two squares. Let's see. Let me come back to this one. This one is already got a GCF. So here I could factor out this from both. So I would divide out M minus 2N, and then I'm left with P to the fourth minus Q to the fourth. Whenever that exponent is an even number like that, we can keep going on that. So what I can do here is keep going, and this will become p squared minus q squared, and then p squared plus q squared. And then this one can keep going as well. Don't forget to keep writing this. This will become p plus q, P minus Q, and then this one can't be factored, so just rewrite it. This next one, this is an example of a perfect square trinomial. So what we can do is square root this, square root this, and do the check. Square root of 36A squared is 6a, square root of 25 is five, and then you double it. If that gives you the middle, then you know it's a perfect square trinomial, and all you need to do is square root this, 6a, square root this, and then put the sign of the middle, and it's squared. Because a binomial squared is always going to produce or give you a, 
a perfect square trinomial. Let me see if I can drop down and find some more that we could do. That might be a little different. Maybe we can practice with the trinomials. Let's jump to like number 17. Let's see if it's on this page. This is the difference of two squares, number seven. Let me just get some different variety in here. So like here, this one might be a bit challenging. Notice there's no GCF here. This one might be better to guess and test because if I multiply, let me go ahead and put it in standard form. Um, I'm going to put the 21a squared minus 41a plus 10. Now, we could do guess and test here. Let me just show you how that works. And then I'll also do it with the grouping. So if we were to guess and test, what we're doing is taking the factors of 21, 1 and 21, or 3 and 7, and then the factors of 10, 1 and 10, and 2 and 5, and start putting them into binomials, and then guess and test. So like you take the factors here, so I can either choose to put like 1a and 21a here, and then if I wanted to use the one and the 10, and then notice my sign in the middle is gonna be negative, so this tells me that in order to get a positive 10, both signs need to be negative. And then now what I would do is FOIL and just check outer and inner to see if it gives me 41. This is the guess and test method. So this gives me 31, negative 31A. So this doesn't work. So now I gotta start over and try some different ones. So let's say I change it up and try three and seven this time. So this is the trial and error method without factor by grouping. So now instead of doing 21 and one, let me try three and seven. And also I could switch up and try the two and the five. So let me try that as well. Um, again, this can be kind of tedious and you might end up doing a bunch of foiling questions until you find the one that works. So if I try this one, if I do outside, or inside gives me negative 35A, and outside gives me negative 6A, this is the correct one, because when I add them, I get negative 41. So that's how you can factor it using guess and test. But let's do it the other way, where we would multiply this beginning one with the ending one, so that would give me 210. I need to find factors of 210 that also add to give me negative 41. So this might take a little bit of time um, to do this, but let's try it. So we have one and 210, and they have to both be negative. Uh, negative two, and 105, still not getting there, because that's 107. 210 divided by three, that's 70, still not at 41. 210 divided by four, that doesn't go in evenly, five will. 210 divided by five, 42, still doesn't give me 41. 210 divided by six, and there's my magic combination. So you're gonna take that, so again, rewrite the problem, 21a squared, and then replace the middle. And again, it doesn't matter the order you put them in. And now I factor by grouping. Purple group, blue group. GCF here is gonna be 3a. After I divide, I'm left with 7a minus two. GCF here of blue, in order to make that look the same, I'm gonna pull out a negative five. And then I'm left with 7a minus two. These two are the same. 
right at once and take these two, put it together. And that's the same answer I got when I guess and tested. So again, you know, a nice variety here. Um, let's look for another one. Let's see what's on this page. Um, when you've got an exponent like this with a to the fourth, just remember that this is a diff this is the difference of two squares. Um, whenever you square root um, a variable, remember you divide it by the index. So four divided by two is two. So this would become a squared plus b squared and a squared minus b squared. Um, this one's done, so just keep rewriting it. And then here, a plus b, a minus b. Same thing on the one right below it. Those are the difference of two perfect squares. Remember when you square root it, the square root of this, you divide it by two, it becomes m to the fourth. When you square root this one, this will become n to the fourth. And remember when it's a difference of two squares, after you square root them, one gets a plus sign, one gets a minus sign, same thing I just did above, and then keep going. This one, remember there is no such thing as the sum of two squares. So this one would be done, but this one I gotta keep going. So square root them, make one plus, one minus, and then this one's done. This one can go one more time, plus, minus, and don't forget to rewrite this one in as well. So final answer would be all of that.